Picture this. You just got your paycheck and already it's spread thin between rent, groceries, that new pair of shoes you've been eyeing, and oh, that yoga subscription you promised yourself this year. Before you even had a chance to celebrate, your hard-earned cash seems to have sprouted wings and flown away. You're left wondering, where did it all go? And how can you possibly balance your needs, your wants, and your financial goals without pulling your hair out or surviving on instant noodles until the next payday? Well, we might just have a solution for you. It's called the 70 30th rule in personal finance. It's a pretty popular concept that's been doing the rounds, promising to help you navigate the choppy waters of personal finance. Intrigued? I thought so. Sounds familiar? Buckle up because we're about to dive into a solution that may just save your financial sanity. So, what's this 70 30th rule all about? Let's dive into the heart of the matter. Picture your income as a pie, a financial pie if you will. The 70-30 rule suggests that you slice this pie into two unequal yet significant pieces. 70% of your pie or income should be dedicated to your needs, those unavoidable, gotta have it to live expenses. The remaining 30%, that's for your wants, the fun stuff, the icing on your financial cake. This rule isn't a new kid on the block. It's been around for a while emerging from the collective wisdom of financial gurus and budgeting wizards. They saw the need for a simple yet effective method to manage personal finances. But don't be deceived by its simplicity. This rule isn't a one-size-fits-all hat. There are variations tailored to fit different financial hats. We have the 60 40 the 50-30-20, and others. Each tweaking the balance between needs and wants and sometimes even introducing a saving slice. The 70 30 rule, like any rule, isn't without its critics. Some argue that it might not work for everyone, after all as diverse as the stars in the sky and so are our financial situations. A single mother struggling to make ends meet might find the 70-30 rule a tall order, while a high-income earner might find it too generous. It's crucial to remember that this rule is a guideline, a starting point, it's not set in stone and it's definitely not a rigid commandment from the budgeting gods. The beauty of the 70-30 rule lies in its flexibility. It's like a yoga master bending and stretching to accommodate your unique financial needs and goals. It serves as a foundation, a baseline from which you can adjust and modify to suit your individual circumstances. Maybe for you, it's more of a 80-20 rule, or perhaps even a 60-15-25 rule, with that extra slice going towards your savings or debt repayments. Think of it as a financial roadmap, guiding you towards a more balanced spending lifestyle. It's not about restricting your spending but rather about creating a framework that encourages healthy financial habits. It's about achieving that sweet spot between living for today and planning for tomorrow. Now isn't that a rule worth exploring? If you're finding this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe our channel for more financial wisdom. Let's unpack that 70%, the needs. These are the non-negotiables. So what exactly falls into the category of needs? Well. This is where we talk about those essential expenses. You know, the ones that keep the roof over your head, the lights on, and food in your belly. We're talking about costs like housing, utilities, groceries, and any bills you have to pay regularly. But wait, you might be thinking, what about my gym membership or my internet bill? Are those needs? The answer, my friend, is it depends. If you're working from home and rely on the internet for your job, then yes, it would be a need. But if you're using it to binge watch your favorite shows, then it might fall more into the wants category. This is why it's so important to accurately and honestly assess your needs. It's easy to blur the lines between needs and wants, especially when we live in a world that's constantly telling us we need the latest gadget or fashion trend. But let's face it, the cost of living isn't getting any cheaper. Prices for essentials like housing and groceries are steadily climbing, making it harder for many of us to stick to that 70% rule. So. How do we deal with these rising costs? Firstly, don't panic. There are ways to optimize your spending without compromising on quality. For instance, you could look at downsizing or finding a roommate to share housing costs. When it comes to groceries, planning meals, buying in bulk, or opting for generic brands can all help you save some dough. You could also consider cutting down on utilities. No, we're not suggesting you live in the dark, but simple changes like turning off lights when you leave a room or unplugging devices when they are not in use can add up to significant savings over time. What about those unavoidable bills? Well, it might be worth negotiating with service providers or shopping around for better deals. You'd be surprised at how much you can save just by asking. But what if I have debts, you might ask? Well, 
debt repayment is also considered a need. After all, those interest charges aren't going to pay themselves, are they? If you're struggling with debt, it might be worth seeking professional advice or exploring options like debt consolidation. So, there you have it. The 70% of your income that should ideally go towards your needs. It's all about making smart choices and prioritizing what's truly important to you. Remember, needs aren't about deprivation. They're about ensuring your basic comfort. And who doesn't want to live comfortably, right? Now let's talk about the fun part, the wants. This is your 30%, your playground, the space where you can get a little frivolous and indulge in life's pleasures. The beauty of the wants category lies in its flexibility. It's like a chameleon, it can adapt to your changing priorities, whims, and fancies. Let's take a moment to understand what falls under this category. Well, it's pretty much everything that's not a need. From your Netflix subscription, that trendy pair of shoes, to the impromptu weekend getaway, these are the things that add spice to life, make it enjoyable, and let's be honest, we all love a bit of spice, don't we? But here's the catch. The wants category while liberating can be a slippery slope. It's like a cookie jar. Once you start, it can be hard to stop. That's why it's crucial to align your wants with your personal values and priorities. Ask yourself, is this want in sync with my long-term goals? Does it add value to my life? If the answer is yes, then, by all means, indulge. Now, on to the trends. The wants category has seen some interesting trends. With the rise of digital platforms, we've seen a shift towards subscriptions and experiences. The joy of binging on your favorite series or exploring a new city, these are the wants of the modern world. But how do we manage our wants effectively? Well, it's all about setting limits and being smart. Consider setting a monthly limit for your wants. This can help you enjoy your pleasures without derailing your financial train. And remember, there's no harm in hunting for a good deal or finding free alternatives. After all, who said you can't have fun without breaking the bank? So go ahead, enjoy your wants. Just remember to keep them within the 30%. It's all about balance, isn't it? A bit of fun, a bit of responsibility, and a whole lot of financial wisdom. That's the 70-30 rule for you. But what if the 70 30th rule doesn't fit your lifestyle? Let's face it, personal finance is just that, personal. And while the 70 30 rule offers a great framework, it's not necessarily a one-size-fits-all solution. So what if your income varies? Or you live in a city where the cost of living is sky high? Or perhaps you're a minimalist who spends less on wants and more on experiences? Don't sweat, my friends. The beauty of the 70 30 rule is its flexibility. You see, it's like a tailored suit. You can adapt it to fit your income levels, lifestyle choices, and financial goals. For instance, if you're a student or just starting in your career, you might choose a 80-20th split, focusing more on needs than wants. Or maybe you're at a stage where you can afford to allocate a larger chunk to wants, say a 60-40th split. And then there's the approach of personalizing categories. Maybe you have a penchant for travel or a passion for gourmet cooking. You could create a separate category for these expenses, adjusting the rest accordingly. It's all about making the rule work for you. But the adaptability doesn't stop there. Oh no, you might be wondering, what about my debt? How does that fit into the 70-30 rule? Well, you're not alone. Some folks have found success by integrating debt repayment into the rule. They carve out a portion from the needs or wants category or even both to pay down debt. It's like killing two birds with one stone, living your life and becoming debt free. So you see, the 70-30 rule is more of a flexible friend than a strict schoolmaster. It's not about perfection, but progression. It's about finding a system that helps you manage your money effectively without feeling deprived or overwhelmed. Remember, the goal is not to shoehorn your lifestyle into a rigid framework. It's about creating a balanced and sustainable spending plan that aligns with your unique circumstances and goals. The 70-30 rule isn't a one-size-fits-all. It's a starting point, a guide to help you create a budget that works for you. So, go ahead, tweak it, twist it, make it your own. After all, it's your money and your life. All right, time to wrap this up. We've taken a journey through the world of personal finance, exploring the 70 30ths rule. Remember, it's not a one-size-fits-all solution, but a tool. A tool to help you navigate the choppy seas of income and expenditure. At its heart, it's about balancing your needs, the essentials that keep the lights on and the pantry stocked, with your wants, those delightful little extras that make life sparkle. But the key to making it work is customization. Yes, you heard it right. The 70 30th rule is like a tailored suit. It should fit you and your lifestyle perfectly. And don't be afraid to adjust as you go. Life is unpredictable and your finances should be able to flex and adapt with it. So how are you going to use the 70 30th rule? 
Remember it's not about perfection, but about making more informed decisions. Here's to a balanced financial future. Now, if you've enjoyed this journey and found it helpful, be sure to smash that like button. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with more financial wisdom. We have a lot more to share with you.